What is going on guys? Jack here and welcome to episode 101 of the Rise to Glory here with Gibraltar Apex and today I have for you guys another Champions League live com, this time away from home against Benfica. If you missed last episode, episode 100, I tried to do something special. Upon reflection, it wasn't quite as grand as some of my previous episode 100s, but I'm confident that we're going to have a lot more landmarks in this save for big and grand episodes and well... It was a good episode nevertheless, a triple header if you missed it, definitely go check it out. Of course today we do take on Benfica as I mentioned in the Champions League. Since the last game, just three games to tell you guys about all really convincing wins. We won 8-0, we won 8-1 and we won 9-1. Unfortunately that 9-1 means that we've conceded for the year. Of course we are going for that elusive year in the league where we don't concede a goal. Unfortunately, just like last year... We've conceded fairly early on in the season, really, which is a bit of a shame, but still we're going fairly strong. We're of noting Gibraltar Lions also dominating in the league. They are yet to lose as well. Uh, you can see they've only conceded one goal themselves, so they're almost becoming as dominant as we are. If only they could score as many goals, as I guess, as we are too. Either way, that could mean that our Gibraltar Lions League games actually have some significance depending on the points margin, so perhaps something to look forward to later on in the year, depending on how things pan out there. Either way... A little bit of news before we do get into this Champions League game, and uh, it's transfers. Now, if you watched last episode, you know I talked a bit about the money, how I hadn't spent a lot of money, and I had this money that I was sat on. And after that episode, I kind of, I thought to myself, I kind of want to spend this money. You know, I'm sat on £12 million, I also have £400,000 in the wage budget free. Let's go and find some young talent, you know, potential first team players, let's sign them up, let's get them in, let's develop them, and that's what I've done. So you'll notice here we have Bulak coming in. He's a player who's been coming in for a little while. Could be a good Australian. I like the fact he can play sweeper. A little bit of a gimmick there. Uh, but he looks like a half-decent centre-back, age 17, of course, joining us on a free. But no, he's not one of the players I want to talk about because we have a trio of Argentini Argentinians. I'm going to refer to these guys as the three musketeers. They're all from the Argentine under-20 squad. That's how I found them initially, through scouting them there. And yeah, they all look fairly good. The first guy here we have is uh, Cabral. Now this guy, I am signing, and I will double check how much I'm signing him for. I'm signing him for £4.2 million. A little bit of an odd thing. He's going to be on £20,000 a week. Now you might be thinking, Jack, you have gone bloody mental. This guy, you know, he's good, but he's not great. Now the reason I paid £20,000 a week in wages, which makes him one of the biggest earners, isn't because I think he's going to be one of the best players immediately. In fact, the reason I've signed him is... Because I went in for him, having scouted him and seen that, you know, he could be quite a good little player. And then PSG went in for him. And from my experience in F in FM, if a big European team goes in for a player who you're not sure about, that's usually a very good sign. Particularly if you're a little club like myself, where we don't have the best scouts in the world. If you're scouting a player, if you're sat on the fence about a player, look at the teams interested in him. Because that can be a very, very telling sign. As I mentioned, PSG were interested in him. He is going to be joining us. You can see Monaco, uh, AC Milan, Juve, Napoli all interested in him as well. The Argentine is only 18 years old. He's actually got a birthday coming up in a little while, but he looks very, very good. Great technically. Some okay mentals. Definitely room to chew to him there. And he's got some nice physicals as well. Anyway, number two of the three musketeers is Miguel Ganari. Now, this guy, another Argentine, he is a centre mid and kind of defensive midfielder in a lot of ways. Looking at him here, 17 years old. He's going to be joining us, I believe, for £4 million. In fact, £3.8 million, even cheaper. Uh, he's only joining us on £60,000 a week in wages. You can see he looks like a very good player. Good passing, good teamwork, reasonable vision. Could be a very good deep-line playmaker in the long-term future, but also very good when it comes to his tackling and marking, and it's his defensive strengths that really made him stand out to me. The fact he's 17 is great. He has some potential to improve. If we look at his report card, a little bit of an issue perhaps with consistency, but can improve a lot in the future. Very adaptable good team player uh, I think he's a player for the future certainly the last player we have a player who I've not necessarily bought in thinking he's going to make an impact in the first team however I hope long term perhaps he can he joins us for 3. Million, uh, 3.9 million pounds and it's Villalba here now this guy Patricio Villalba is a bit of a unique talent I guess he's right footed but he can play left and right back a bit like Jason Hall in a lot of ways and he looks like a very good talented player playing regularly for Argentina 
I've paid just shy of £4 million for him. The big weakness, and it's a big red light, but I've decided to sign him anyway, is the fact that he is injury prone. That could be an issue. Now, we've brought him in for £4 million there or thereabouts. There weren't other teams interested in this guy, but I just think he looks very good. He's a fantastic athlete. He's a very well-rounded fullback. As good as Jay Marriott is, we have been looking for that kind of that resourceful fullback. Now, we kind of have that in Jason Hall, and normally when we're at full strength, we'll have Marquez on the right, Jason Hall on the left. This guy gives us an option instead of Jason Hall if we want to start him, but he'll also be a fantastic player to have on the bench because he can play left back and right back. So all in all, pretty excited about these players. They're all going to be joining us in the next few months. Two of them join us as soon as the transfer window opens for us, which is on the 28th, I want to say, of December. We might be wearing when it opens in Argentina. Gennari joins us a little bit later, midway through January. But regardless, very excited about these guys. The three musketeers, three players to definitely keep an eye out on. And I'm hoping they can contribute long-term to the club. Brought in for 12 million combined, but I think we're getting some very good value, cheap youth prospects who are definitely going to add some immediate strength in terms of uh, backups to our starting eleven. So either way, let's get into the Benfica game. Just a quick refresher, I guess, on the Champions League scenario. We currently sit second in our group, two points behind Bayern Leverkusen. Looking at it here, Benfica on four points, Shakhtar Donetsk on two. Uh, we need to win this game or Shakhtar to lose. I'm a guarantee to finish in the top three, which would see us get a Europa League spot. If we win today, we guarantee ourselves a spot in the knockout round. So an absolutely massive game for us. In terms of the team, fairly standard. We, we go with Ludwig Jung in goal. We go with Jason Hull, Frigier and Marquez. Worth noting, Mustafa going to be starting at centre-back for us today. Walter Del Sol still struggling with that injury that he had, only at 73% condition. As a result, the Egyptian Mustafa keeps his spot there that he kind of earned during the last episode. In midfield, we go with Smith, JJ, Mora and Mendes. Perhaps the only real shock here is the fact that Mora gets a start. That is due to the fact that Joe Bouchard is out suspended, of course. Mora, however, a player who's played quite a lot of first-team football for us. He's a very talented midfielder, particularly going forward, a good playmaker, can knock around the ball well. His passing lets him down a little bit, but he more than makes up for that in his decisions and his vision. And also, I love the fact that he's got 16 finishing, a very good player. A player who, at one point, I did contemplate training to be a striker. I decided not to, but he's developed well at the club. He's got a potential injury problem, but he's never really suffered from that while he's been at the club, and I'm hoping that today he can put in a good performance for us. Up front we go with Mitchell, who has been the main source of goals in this European campaign. He's got eight in seven games. And alongside him we go with Van Dijk, uh, the Dutch player who, of course, we signed last year from Manchester United. He has 11 goals in eight Champions League games. He's doing well for us. Hopefully he can put in another stellar performance today. So let's, let's submit this team. We are, of course, playing our 4-4-2 attack. Worth noting that Benfica, of course, the team at home. Looking at their team, we know that they've got some good players. We beat them 2-1 in the tie at the space part. Looking at their team, they've got Tiber here, a young Brazilian. They've also got Roca, who's a very, very good Argentine playmaker. Up front, they've got uh, Jose here, an incredible player, if I'm honest. Slightly envious of the talent that Benfica have. We are going to have to play at our very best to stop them today. But we did it in the first game against them. I'm hoping to do it in this, the second game against them today. I'm going to tell the team that we're under dogs. I screwed up all my team talks if you watched last episode. So not going to tell the players that I expect them to get a result. Although inside, I do think this is the kind of game that we do need to win if we do want to get that top two league spot. Of course, head-to-head -head does come into this. And with our last game being against Bayern Leverkusen, which I don't want to say I don't expect us to win, but having lost the first game against them 3-0 doesn't seem too likely. This game has some pretty big significance. If Benfica win this, I, I, I almost think that's us inferred. And, well, Benfica are winning this. It's taken 40 seconds. That is the nightmare start. Not what I wanted to see here. The ball comes in. Benfica nod at home. And, well, we've lasted less than a minute. Who is that a left back? Is that Jason Hall just caught in no man's land? Goes to close down the ball, misses it. Just leaves acres of space for Sanchez down the right to run into. And it's Rebelio Jose with the goal there. And that's just... It's irritating. It's annoying. The players need to bounce back from that now, you know. We're 1-0 down. This is a must-win game for us. If we get a draw, that's not the worst result in the world. And I think due to head-to-head, -head, actually... A draw would see us guarantee ourselves to finish ahead of Benfica because we won the first game, but I don't want it to come down to that. I want to win this game, 
And at the moment, it doesn't seem like that's all that likely. Although Mora tries to get away the ball there. Unfortunately, cut out. And now, well, Benfica on the assault again. Edda whips the ball into the box. Jose, he's already got one goal to his name. We've blocked the shot there. But really, the ball shouldn't ever be making its way to him. It's poor defending again. And well, the chance ends and another one immediately starts again. Benfica with the throw in inside. Mora with a nice little block there. Now with Romero, their left back. Now with Tiber. Romero on the left back overlap. Good run by him. Saved away quite nicely in the end by Young. Perhaps a little bit fortunate it was the left back who came into the play there. Looking at the stats in this game. 17 minutes gone. We've been awful. We've actually been terrible. I'm going to tell the players... Uh, well, I'm going to demand more from the players. They've been awful in this early stages of this game. It's been a dissatisfactory performance. We're fortunate, really. It's only 1-0. Benfica, two clear-cut chances. They could be two or three ahead in reality. We have to count ourselves lucky. But we've been given a chance in this game. We've slowly got a bit more into this game. we yet to have a shot against us since I had that team talk about 20 minutes ago, which is a good kind of change. And you can see the players are starting to perform that a little bit better. If we could get into half-time at 1-0, I'd be happy. If we could get a goal now, it could be huge for us. Mora, Smith, Mitchell, Van Dijk smashes it over. Got to score that. A poor, poor effort by him. The whole goal at his mercy down the right side. And the Dutchman, he's fluffed his lines. It was, I believe... Mitchell with the ball across and I kind of feel like if that's the other way around Mitchell scores unfortunately for us just not good enough there going to tell the players I expect to see a much better performance in the second half Mora on a booking is a little bit concerning he's not performed too well in this game I'm going to take him off I'm actually going to give Scott Greatorex a game a player who he's complained about a lack of opportunities and I think that's a lot down to the fact we have the likes of Mora Martinez and Bouchard in the side and I kind of see him as our fourth choice playmaker in a lot of ways but he's a good player the Belgium he's going to come on here I want him to give me something to shout about I believe this is going to be his debut for the club at least in a live com but I don't recall playing him in the league so unless he played in a very early qualifying game of the Champions League this will be a debut for him and maybe he can make an impact or maybe maybe he can just miss uh, a possible interception there at the near post hard to tell but it's another set-piece goal. Greater X here, near post. Could he have stopped this coming in? Probably not. Maybe I'm being harsh on him. I mean, Mustafa, the Egyptian, has got to be marking him there. We have suffered from the fact right there that we are, of course, without Walter Del Sol. And that in itself is a little bit disappointing. We've got to change things up. We're going to go to the 4-2-3-1. I am going to bring in... Who am I going to bring in? Who am I? I'm going to bring in Daniel Martinez. At centre attacking mid. We're going to go with Rhett Mendes at right attacking mid. Smith out on left. Mitchell up top. Um, yeah, the players, they've got to try and make something happen here. And we're going to go on the attack, I think, to try and make it happen. We have got 30 minutes here to try and really rescue a draw. That's got to be the aim at this point. A draw, a possible result that could see us do well. Although, if we concede another here, it's bad. It's very bad. Benfica score again. And, well, not for the first time in this group stage. We have gone away from home. And we've bottled it. We've been outclassed by superior opposition. The ball in there. Got to be doing better. The ball squeezes in at the near post. Just simply put, not good enough by us. We've not turned up in this big game. It was one of our biggest games of the group stage. Had so much hinging on it. And, well, we still have time to try and turn it around. But, well, Martínez misses a, a real chance there. Probably should be doing better. And that really has epitomised this game for us. Looking at the stats, you'd have to say... Not completely outclassed, and there is still time, but at the same time, of what we've seen so far, it's very hard to see ourselves getting back into this game. We've now had two clear-cut chances. We've had 14 shots to Benfica's 15. It's a game of fine margins, and if we were fortunate to beat Benfica, you'd have to say that they are very fortunate today to be 3-0 up against us. That said, they've taken our chances, and simply put, we haven't. Their superior quality in front of goal definitely really showing through in today's game that said you know i'm not going to give up on the team yet 25 minutes left we have started to play some better football and we are bringing the ball forward again here jason hall out on the left can he whip in a ball of quality to paul smith whips it in just no one on the back post there no one in the box that's got to be where mitchell is looking for that kind of ball and while he wasn't trying to make a running behind and the ball itself by smith was pretty disappointing to say the least Anyway, we are able to make one more change. I'm going to actually bring in Juan Carlos, who is a very capable player. He's a good target man. He's a very good player on the deck as well. He's quite fast. And I think we need we need him. We need an option. We need, we need to go more direct. We need to try and find 
him if we can. And uh, let's see what we can do. I mean, we don't have a lot of time left in this game. Let's be honest here. Let's be real. It's 3-0. We're, we're really rolling the dice here. It could get worse for us. It's, we're fortunate that there's a foul given because that could have been 4-0. The goal disallowed for Benfica, although they will now have a set piece. And they found the, the, they found the goal from that. It's 4-0. It's an embarrassing display here, a shameful display, some might say. And, well, we go into our next game against Leverkusen knowing that we have to win and we need results to potentially go our way to get anything from that game. If this game is anything to go by, like, I need to drop the entire squad. This has been a terrible, terrible performance. We should be in this game. We should be competitive in this game. We have been competitive in this game to an extent, but we've not taken our chances and we've not limited Benfica's goal-scoring opportunities. And their superior quality in front of goal really has shone through in this game. They have taken chances that have come their way. They've made the most of their set pieces. And we've not. And that is the difference in this game. It's going to finish 4-0. Perhaps the scoreline flatters them slightly, but regardless, a very poor performance there. And you can see what that result does. It leaves us third in the group behind Benfica. Uh, our goal difference is poorer. I believe it goes to head-to-head, -to -head, and if that's the case, well, we need Shakhtar to do us a favour in next episode's Livecom, which will be at home against Leverkusen. Uh, so where is the sorting rule? Let's find the sorting rule and find out. So league sorting rule is actually results between teams. So, we, yeah, we, we need results to go away. We need to get very fortunate. We need Benfica to lose or draw and ourselves to win. But, yeah. Not great. Really not great. If you've enjoyed this episode, leave a like. Not a memorable one for the right reasons. At least we have the silver lining of the fact we have got some really exciting young talent coming into the squad. Definitely excited to see how those players can flourish in our system. And uh, hopefully you guys are too. So with that said, that is all for now. Thank you for watching, guys. I'll be back for that game against Leverkusen in episode 102. Hopefully I'll see you guys for that one. It is me, Jack. And I will talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out. <laughs>